Hello everyone. Today we'll be talking about mechanism of normal labor and we'll be talking about various uh, process, uh, various cardinal movement that occur during the labor including engagement, descent and various other steps of the labor and we will be discussing in each and uh, is in as easy manner as possible and let's start now. Uh, so what is mechanism of normal labor? The, uh, the, the normal labor is the series of movement that occur in on the head in the process of adaptation during its journey through the pelvis is known as mechanism of labor. I will repeat it again. The series of movement that occur on the head of the fetus in the process of adaptation during its journey through the pelvis is called the mechanism of labor and uh, it should be borne in mind that while the principal movement are taking in the head the rest of the fetal trunk is also involved in it either participating in or initiating the movement and the uh, normal fetus as we, as we know uh, normal fetus has longitudinal eye the presentation is cephalic presentation the presenting part is vertex position is left occipital transverse that is the most common one and the denominator is the occiput uh, in the in the normal labor head enters the brim of the pelvis more commonly through the uh, transverse transverse diameter in 70 percent of the cases and to lesser extent through one of the oblique diameter and accordingly the position is either occipital lateral that is also known as the occipital transverse uh, or oblique uh, that, or that might be an oblique occipital anterior type uh, left occipital anterior and left occipital posterior are there and there is left and right occipital transverse and left occipital transverse is the one of the most common and the and the engaging anterior posterior diameter of the head is either suboccipital pragmatic that is 9.5 cm that is most common that is suboccipital pragmatic or uh, engaging anterior posterior diameter or if there is slight deflection then the occipital frontal uh, might be there and the engaging transverse diameter is the bipartal diameter that is 9.5 cm and the uh, as the occipital lateral or occipital transverse position is the most common the mechanism of labor in such position will be described uh, in this video and and we have the seven uh, we have the various cardinal movement that takes place in the fetus uh, cardinal movement are the movement which take place due while the fetus is traversing through the maternal pelvis and the, we have various uh, uh, cardinal movement and that can be remembered by the mnemonic every damn pool in crowded egypt rest and eat raw egg so every means e for engagement dam for descent flexion uh, engagement descent flexion of the head internal rotation of the head uh, the crowning extension restitution external rotation and expulsion of the head trunk and in according to some sources uh, the crowning and restitution are not uh, regarded as uh, part of uh, cardinal movement but also that doesn't matter same mnemonic will work uh, like every damn pool in you can just skip crowded every damn pool in egypt is raw egg every damn pool in egypt is raw egg or if you want to remember all these nine steps then that is every damn pool in crowded egypt rest and eat uh, raw egg okay that was about the cardinal movement and we will discuss about it in detail and so first of all talking about engagement and the engagement occurs when the largest transverse diameter of the presenting part has passed through the pelvic inlet or crossed the pelvic rim. That is the uh, largest transverse diameter that is bipartal uh, of the presenting part has passed through the pelvic inlet or crossed the pelvic rim. And uh, if in power abdominal exam it is uh, two fifth or less then that is known as engagement. Uh, we can see here various uh, uh, the, the engagement part of the uh, head of the fetus the pelvic edge is completely above the brim that is 5 by 5 uh, we have already discussed this in the previous video so if it is 2 by 5th or le uh, less uh, palpable above the pubic sympathies then that is uh, we can say that the head is engaged and the head has all the bipartite diameter has already crossed the pelvic rim or pelvic inlet uh, we can see the next picture the baby is in this year the baby is, is not engaged as the widest bipartite diameter widest diameter is above the brim of pelvis and here the baby head is engaged as the widest diameter is below the brim, brim of pelvis the widest diameter is below the brim of pelvis that is known as engaged head and and in primary gravida the engagement occurs in a significant number of the cases before the onset of labor while in multiparity the same may occur in the first stage with the rupture of um, of rupture of the membrane 
okay this is the simplified diagram showing the uh, pelvic inlet or pelvis uh, so so we just imagine that this is the pubic symphysis this is the uh, head lies in the occiput of the head of the fetus lies in this position uh, in the transverse left of the transverse that is most common uh, the, this is anterior uh, position anterior pubic uh, pubic symphysis here yeah, this is sacral pulmonary and the uh, the the, uh, the soldier lies in the anterior posterior thigh. this is anterior soldier pole lies in here and posterior soldier lies here so the head lies here so just you can imagine that uh, this is uh, how the uh, fetus orients itself <coughs> and we can name number it as one two three four five six seven eight and we will be mainly revolving around this picture in the upcoming uh, part left occipital transverse position and this is one common position of the head and fetus lies in this is while it is engaged after that we have the next uh, step known as descent uh, according to mnemonic we have the some dam every dam dam means descent every dam every means engaged engagement and this is dam in descent so descent provided that there is no undue bony or soft tissue obstruction the descent is a continuous process and it is slow or insignificant in the first stage but the, it is more pronounced in the second stage of labor and it is completed with the expulsion of the fetus and in primary gravida the prior engagement of the head there is practically no descent in the first stages while in multipara the descent start with the engagement and the head is expected to reach the pelvic floor by the time cervix is fully dilated and the the passive uh, factors facilitating descent are uterine contraction and retraction bearing down efforts and strengthening of the ovoid fetal especially after rupture of the membrane and nextly we have the flexion next step is flex them some every dam full so this is the picture showing the flexion of the head the, while the some degree of flexion of the head is noticeable at the beginning of labor but the complete flexion is rather uncommon as the head meets the resistance of the birth clanal during descent full flexion is as achieved uh, thus if a pelvic is adequate flexion is achieved either due to resistance offered by the unfolding pelvis the wall of pelvis or the pelvic floor and it has been seen that a flexion precedes internal rotation or at least coincide with it and flexion is essential for descent since it reduces the shape and size of the plane of the advancing diameter of the head this is the fetus the liver action produced by flexion of the head reducing the engaging diameter of the head from the occipital frontal to the occipital pragmatic position and this in this way the uh, it reduces the shape and size of the uh, diameter of the uh, plane for advancing diameter of the head and the flexion is explained by two uh, two arm liver theory the fulcrum represented by occipital allantoid joint of the head and the short arm de extend from condyles to the occipital protuberance and the long arm extends from condyle to the chin and when resistance in encounter the ordinary by the ordinary law of mechanics the short arm descend and the long arm as ascend resulting in the flexion of the head the short arm descend whereas the long arm ascend now next step we have the internal rotation of the head uh, the it is the uh, internal rotation is the moment of great importance without which there will be no further uh, descent the mechanism of internal rotation is very complex and although it is easy to although it is very easy to describe the there are various theory that describe the anterior rotation of the occiput of the head and uh, uh, it uh, internal rotation occur at the level of scale spine and the heart's rule one of the uh, theory is the heart's rule uh, that explains the uh, uh, internal rotation according to this theory the part of the part of the head dot touching the muscle will move the move the move in direction of the muscle fiber uh, when uh, the two halves of the levator and of and i form a gutter and uh, and viewed from above the direction of the fiber is backward and towards the midline and during the, so during the uh, during each contraction the head occiput is in occiput in particular in well flexed position stretches the levator any and particularly that half that half which is in relation to the occiput after the contraction passes up elastic recoil of the levator any occurs bringing the occiput towards the midline and the process is repeated until the occiput is placed anteriorly and this is called as in uh, rotation of uh, rotation by law of pelvic floor and this is known as heart's rule and other theories are like due to the pelvic shape forward inclination of the side wall of the cavity narrow by spinous diameter and long uh, anterior posterior diameter of the outlet result in putting the long axis of the head to accommodate the maximum available diameter that is anterior posterior diameter of the outlet leaving behind is uh, smallest by spinous diameter and there is another law known as law of unequal flexibility 
according to it uh, given by Silm and Moir it uh, according to it the internal rotation is primarily due to the inequalities in the flexibility of the component part of fetus and the in the internal rotation the fetus is in this one number position and it will gradually move to the uh, three number position that is two two by eight uh, this is eight uh, eight uh, different area uh, part of the we have divided circle and if it one two it will cross the two it will rotate twice two by eight position and it will head will reach in the, this third position and head will reach in the anterior it uh, head will occiput will reach uh, lie in the pubic symphysis so in occipital transfer position there will be anterior rotation by two eighth of the circle of the occiput whereas uh, if the if the if there is oblique anterior then uh, the rotation will be one eighth in the occipital transverse or occipital lateral there will be two two by two eighth of the circle will be anterior rotated and uh, placing the occiput behind the pubic symphy symphysis pubis so let's see again this is where uh, this is how it occurred the initially occiput is here and it will rotate and it the occiput reaches the anterior position in, in front of pubic symphysis it will rotate this like this is known as internal rotation 90 degree internal rotation so thus pre thus, thus prerequisite for anterior internal rotation is of the head are well flexed head efficient uterine and contraction favorable shape uh, favorable shape at the mid pelvic plane and tone of the levator and eye muscle and the level at which internal rotation occurs is variable and inter rotation of in, of in the cervix although favorable is less frequent occurrence and in majority of the cases rotation occurs at the pelvic floor and rarely it occurs as as late as crowning of the head and again uh, uh, it is inhibited and there will be side by side the echo in, during the internal rotation of head there will be torsion of the neck also uh, the, this is inevitable phenomenon uh, during the internal rotation of the head if the soldier remain in the anterior posterior diameter uh, again we see here during the uh, uh, if the soldier remain in anterior posterior diameter the neck has to sustain a torsion of two eighths of the circle corresponding with the same degree of anterior rotation of the occiput but the neck fails to with, withstand such major degree of torsion and such there will be some amount of simultaneous rotation of the soldier in the same direction to extent of one eighth of the circle so uh, occiput will rotate in this two eighth of the circle but where whereas the soldier will rotate here in and this is the four position it will soldier will rotate it and reach one eighth of the circle soldier will soldier soldier in the same direction as that of rotation of the occiput uh, one eighth uh, uh, rotate in the one eighth of the circle placing the soldier to lie in the oblique diameter uh, this is four and it soldier will write in four and eight position this is uh, oblique position either oblique position with one eighth of the torsion is still left behind uh, occiput will rotate by two eighth circle or uh, soldier will rotate by one eighth circle initially soldier was here in the third three number position now it will reach into four number position and occiput was initially one number position in, in now we will reach three number position that happens in internal rotation of the head that happens when there is the internal rotation of the head and uh, and thus uh, uh, thus the soldier moved to occupy the left oblique diameter and here uh, why left oblique diameter means that the it is start it uh, the it starts from the left sacroiliac joint this is this is position of sacroiliac joint and uh, this left sacro left oblique position is uh, one of is common but uh, if originally the if occiput was in this two number position that is a uh, left ox uh, that is left occipital anterior position in oblique anterior occipital anterior oblique and occipital anterior position then there will be no movement of soldier uh, there will be no movement of soldier from the oblique diameter as the head uh, head is only sustained only torsion of one eighth. So that's how the internal rotation occurred. And uh, and after the internal rotation, now next step we have is that crowning of the head. After the internal rotation of it, further descent occurs until the sub occiput lies underneath the pubic cards. At this stage, the maximum diameter of the head, biparietal diameter, stretches the bulb outlet without any recession of the head, even after the contraction is over, and it is called as crowning of the head. And the, 
then after the delivery of hair takes place by extension the deli delivery of hair takes place by the extension through uh, couple uh, couple of force theory the driving force pushes the head in the downward direction while the pelvic floor offers a resistance in the upward and forward direction and the downward and upward force to neutralize neutralize and remaining a forward thrust help in the extension and the successive part of the head to be born are uh, born are first of all vertex uh, bro and face we have the occiput it will extend vertex flow and face and immediately following the stretch or release of chin through the anterior margin of the stretch perineum the heads drop down bringing the chin in close proximity to maternal anal opening this is the picture showing extension first of all occiput uh, then vertex will be present then the bro presentation and then uh, finally the face uh, first of all uh, occiput vertex um, bro bro there will be bro presentation and face will finally come out from the intuitors then we have the restitution next step is restitution every dam every dam pool in egypt in crowded egypt rest the rest for restitute rest means the in the visual passive movement of the head due to untwisting of the neck sustained during internal rotation the movement of restitution occur rotating head through one eighth of the circle here uh, restitution is a it is a visible passive movement of the head due to untwisting of the neck sustained during internal rotation so the movement of restitution occur due rotating the head through one eighth of the circle so head was initially in three number position now this it will reach in the two number position and that is known as restitution and it is a direction opposite to that of internal rotation and the occiput thus point to the maternal thigh of the corresponding side to which it is originally laid So this picture shows this is first of all there was initially 90 degree internal rotation and after that in the, after the baby's head come out of the introitus there will be 40, 45 degree restitution uh, the opposite direction to that internal rotation and finally there will be the external rotation after restitution there will be external rotation again 45 degree and head will come out will be uh, the occiput will uh, be in the same position that was it was in the in the originally where it was. The external rotation is the movement of the rotation of the head visible externally due to the internal rotation of the soldier. As the anterior soldier rotate towards the symphysis pubis from the uh, from the oblique diameter, as the uh, as the as the anterior soldier rotates towards the pubic symphysis pubis from the oblique diameter towards the uh, ear, it carries the head in the movement of the external rotation through eighth of the circle in the same direction as restitution and the, the soldier now lie in the anterior posterior diameter and uh, occiput point directly towards the maternal thigh corresponding to the side to which it is originally directed at the time of engagement. This process shows the here uh, this head is born by extension you can see where it is extending head the head drops down uh, uh, drops down with the face close to anus uh, here the restitution the this is called as restitution the again due to the rotation of the head in the internally in the it will be rotated for internally the 45 degree of the uh, rotation opposite to that of internal rotation and here it is again uh, this is known as external rotation uh, finally the occiput was initially the left occipital transverse position here it again fetus head also lies in the same in the left occipital in the in the thigh it points to the same left side in the as it was originally the occiput points directly towards the maternal thigh corresponding to the side to which it originally directed at the time of engagement finally the last step is we have the expulsion of soldier and trunk after the soldier are positioned in the anterior posterior diameter of the outlet the further descent takes place until the anterior soldier escape below the pubic symphysis pubis first by a movement of lateral flexion of the spine the posterior soldier sweeps over the perineum and the rest of the trunk is then expelled by, out by a lateral flexion delivery of the soldier by lateral flexion and the anterior soldier and posterior soldier so that was all about mechanism of labor and in next video we will come up with new topic in obstetrics thank you